welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time, and by popular request, we're going to check out Ventoy. This is an open source tool for making a bootable USB drive to which you can copy multiple ISO or other image files. And you can then boot from your Ventoy drive and select a particular operating system image from a menu. And if this sounds very useful indeed, it is, so let's go and take a closer look. Right, shall we download and install Ventoy? I've got a Corsair USB drive waiting to have it installed on it, and do note that installing Ventoy will delete everything from the USB drive. And as you can probably see, we're currently working in Windows, but I will show a Linux install later in the video. But for now, let's go to the Ventoy website. Here we are, and I do like the Ventoy website. It's very, very clear, works very, very well. I wish more websites were as clear as this. And as you can see, if you want to support the project, they have a donate link. But for now, we'll go to downloads. You probably have guessed that. And you can download files directly from the site, but I'm going to use the SourceForge link we have down here to save their bandwidth. That seems a reasonable idea. And if we just go down here, we can see the latest version is there. And we want to find the uh, Windows version, which is going to be here. Ventoy currently 1.0.96 Windows zip. So let's download that file. It'll get on with it here in SourceForge. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Thunderbirds are go and all of that. Yes, there we are. We will save a Ventoy Windows zip file like that. And there we are, we can now close down our browser and hopefully I've got, oh look, here we are, the file we just downloaded. So let's click on that file, right click and extract all because it's a, a zip file like that. There we go, and if we just open it up now, we will find somewhere here a file called Ventoy to disk. There it is, so let's run that up. Do we want to do it, Windows? Yes, we do. And there we are. It's automatically picked up the Corsair USB drive, but obviously here we can pick another drive if we wish to. And all we now have to do is to click on Install. And do we want to do it? Do we want to lose all the data on the drive? We do, so we'll click on Yes, and uh, Yes again. And there we are, Ventoy has been installed. That was nice and fast. We can close that down. And what Ventoy will have done is to create two partitions on our USB drive, one with Ventoy on it, and also an empty partition to which we can copy across ISO or other image files. Specifically, we can work with files in either ISO, WIM, IMG, or VHD virtual hard drive format. And if we go down here, we should hopefully find, there we are, there's a Ventoy drive, there it is, all empty. And up here, I've got various ISO files. So let's just take a few of these across. We'll take, say, a Linux Mint, We'll take Ubuntu and maybe a, that Windows 11 file. We'll uh, copy those files like that and paste them across like uh, this. And if you're wondering how I've got the paste and copy commands on my Windows right-click menu, it's because I've done a hack for that, as I've shown in a previous video. And there we are, it's finished. We've now got three ISO files on our Ventoy drive. And what Ventoy will do when we boot from it is to scan this partition and any subfolders in it for operating system images and present them to us alphabetically in the menu. So let's test that out. Let's uh, close everything down here, be nice and neat, and we will close down Windows and test out Ventoy. And here we are coming up again. I've got the computer set to boot directly from a USB drive. Exactly how you do that will depend on your BIOS, but uh, as we can see here, we have booted directly to Ventoy, and it has given us a menu of the three possible ISO files we could boot from. Let's, uh, let's try booting to, for example, Ubuntu 2204. Let's uh, press Enter on that. Boot in normal mode, I think, will be fine. And try and install Ubuntu. We're now getting the options we would see if we created a live Ubuntu install media from its ISO file using a program such as Belena Edger. And as we can see, it clearly worked. Let's, uh, let's prove it's really worked. Let's uh, try Ubuntu running from the Eventoid drive. Is this gonna work? Looks encouraging. We will just speed on through. We don't need to speed on through. Here we are. It is working perfectly well. 
we could open up rhythm box and things like that. So this, this clearly works. So let's try a restarting. Let's do a, a power off and a, a restart, which will boot again from the, the Ventoid drive. And it's asking us to remove the installation media and press enter. We will do that. I've not removed anything. Oh, I'm being wild today. But we should now boot again from our Ventoid drive. Cross your fingers, it should be okay. And yes, we have. We could now, for example, go to a Linux Mint like that. And again, we'll boot in normal mode. It's very exciting, this, isn't it? I hope you're sitting down because uh, you weren't warned it was going to be this exciting. And uh, here we are, arriving in Linux Mint, also working perfectly well, running a live edition. Jolly handy, we could go into a LibreOffice Calc if we wanted to, couldn't we? Running from our Ventoy drive and uh, it works. Oh, that's marvelous. I didn't know whatever that was. Very exciting. Anyway, let's uh, come out again. Let's uh, restart for a, a third time. See if we can get into our Windows 11 ISO. Again, we won't remove our media. We'll just press enter and let things reboot. Here we are. We'll now select our Windows 11 ISO and normal mode. We wanted to uh, install Windows. We won't get a live version of Windows, of course, which will just take it to the Windows installer. And I don't actually want to install Windows, so we will cancel the Windows installation. And once more, our machine will reboot, and we're back to Ventoy, where again, we could pick an operating system image. Greetings. Here we are booting up again because I want to show you something else that's very exciting in Ventoy. Yes, there is more. And as you can see, we've booted from a drive with the ISO files on it we've had previously, Windows 11, Ubuntu and Linux Mint. But what if we wanted to boot from an ISO file that isn't on the Ventoy drive? Well, we can actually do that. And we do this by pressing the Browse feature here. We just have to press F2 like that. And this now gives us a listing of all the drives connected to the computer. And there's quite a few because this is my test rig. It's got a drive with Windows on, a drive with Linux on, and both of those drives have got partitions. But I do know here that SSDA is the C drive in my Windows install. So let's select that. And we can then go down to download, effectively C download. And down here, we've got the directory, the folder with the ISO images in we've been using. And so far, we've been copying across Linux Mint and Ubuntu and Windows 11, but we haven't, for example, taken across, say, Windows 10. So let's try booting from this Windows 10 ISO on this local drive. So uh, enter on that and boot in a normal mode. Don't know quite why we do this, because I don't want to install Windows 10 on this machine, but this will take us, in theory, into the Windows 10 installer. This is just a test. Is it going to work? I'm guessing it is. There we are. So we've proved that Ventoy can run up an ISO image even when it isn't on the Ventoy USB drive. Right, just before we close, I promised we'd look at installing Ventoy on a Linux system. So here we are in Linux Mint. So let's go back to the Ventoy website. Here we are. And there are various different ways of installing Ventoy on a Linux system all of which are very nicely documented here on the Ventoy website. And we're going to take a look at this one using the Linux graphical user interface. So once again, let's go to Downloads, like that. And once again, we'll get the file from SourceForge to save their bandwidth. Except that this time, we're going to go for the Linux tar file. Here we go. So we'll save that, like that. And there we are. It's completed, not a large file. And if we now find that file in a folder, there it is. And again, we'll extract it as we did in Windows. There we are. And so we can see all the files are there. But to execute it, we need to open up a terminal. So let's just go down here and open up that terminal. Here it is. Why is it so big? I don't know. That'll be good enough for us. And if we do an ls, a list to see where we are, there we are in the root. Let's do cd to uh, downloads like that. And uh, list again, what's happening in downloads. We want to go to Ventoy, CD Ventoy like that. What are we doing now? That's looking okay. We can see we want to go to our extracted directory. So CD change directory to Ventoy. If we can hopefully tab the rest, we can and enter. And finally, if we list there, we can see the available files. And the particular file we want to run up 
is the Ventoid GUI .x8664. So let's just do that. A dot and a forward slash Ventoid GUI .x86. Surely it'll autocomplete with that. It will. Just pressing tab there for autocomplete and enter. And as usual on the Linux system, we have to now enter our system password. Almost told you what it was, but I didn't. And there we are. We're now running the Ventor installer here in Linux Mint. And I've got plugged in as previously our Corsair drive on which we've already got Ventor installed. We can see it's installed because Ventor in package, Ventor in device is the same. But I just wanted to show you how we could install Ventor here in Linux. As we've just seen, if you regularly work with lots of different operating system image files, for example, doing lots of operating system installs, then Ventoy is a very useful tool indeed. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,